Hello, after a small vacation and after the birth of my son, I am back. And I'm super excited to say that I will be speaking on Rails World in Amsterdam. I'm going to talk about Hot Fire. And uh, also it is uh, super exciting for me that the creator of Tailwind CSS, Adam Wethen, is also going to speak on Rails World. And actually, Tailwind has become more and more part of the default stack of Ruby on Rails. Right now, when you create a new Ruby on Rails application, you can uh, say uh, Tailwind, and it will generate Tailwind installed out of the box in the Ruby on Rails application. And uh, whenever building a well, Ruby on Rails application, kind of the backend is uh, more or less deterministic. You, you know what you want to build, and you know the final result. And the front end is, uh, in my opinion it's much more opinionated and you can like be perfecting it forever but starting out uh, when you just start a new rails application with the front end you want to have a good layout you want uh, the application to be responsive you want to have a good uh, navbar good sidebar if you want uh, some kind of b2b app so that's what we are going to build in this uh, uh, episode. We are going to build a basic Ruby on Rails application with a responsive uh, navbar, sidebar. You see now I'm scrolling down and the navbar and sidebar are fixed. And uh, if I decrease the screen size, you see the sidebar disappears, the main part takes all the space, and there appears a drop down button. I increase the screen size, and you see that we have the sidebar again, and uh, the button to open the uh, mobile menu disappears. So let's try to build this kind of layout in a new Ruby on Rails application. So I will start by actually creating a new Ruby on Rails application. Let's run this command. Okay, now let's uh, open our app, Tailwind whatever, Rails to be great. Uh, I will say uh, git add git commit m create app okay and now let's try running our app bin dev i will open a new window okay i'll close this and open a new window uh, what's happening bin slash dev Okay, here we are. We have created a new Ruby on Rails application. And now let's uh, add some kind of uh, default view and start styling. So I will uh, say Rails generate uh, controller home index. Okay, now I'll go and start the server once again. And I will navigate to slash home slash index. And here we have our more or less blank canvas. So let's uh, well start styling it. I will... Uh, open the code editor and I will look at our application.html.erb and you see now I have uh, created a new app running Tailwind and we already have some Tailwind styles by default in the application HTML and in the generated uh, index HTML you see there is some Tailwind right here now uh, we are not going to touch this uh, much in the view now we're going to set up our layout so we're going to add a navbar a sidebar and we're going to make it responsive so i'll start by well deleting these uh, lines in the main and let's start with adding a navbar and sidebar so i will need a lot of divs div class i'll just copy this out so we'll have a div for uh, navbar then we'll have a div that will contain uh, so this there's going to be like one top div and one div that is going to contain two elements on the sides so this element and this element they're going to be in in the same div but they're going to be displayed as flex so here we'll have uh, a div with sidebar the main content and uh, let's see what we have Okay, yeah, so here we have navbar, sidebar, and this is the main content. And we need to have the sidebar and main content uh, side by side, not one under another. So I'm going to add the class uh, flex. Okay, and now the sidebar and main are side by side. I will also add some color coding so that it is easier to visually see what we are working with. I will add the bg slate 200. 
here I will add BG Slate 300, uh, here BG Slate 400, and here 500. Okay, so we see different parts of the page. Okay, now uh, we want uh, to have the sidebar and main part of the content have uh, more or less uh, uh, proportional widths. So uh, I really don't like setting a fixed width, like with 40 pixels or 80 pixels. I like it to be proportional. So I would say that uh, I would add width 1 slash 6 and here width uh, 5 out of 6. So you see the sizes are proportional now. Okay, looks uh, better. Now we want to, well, let's say style uh, the elements a bit. So uh, for the main part, I will add padding 4. Actually, I uh, really like the padding 4 by default, and I don't like uh, e uh, old paddings. I usually use padding 1 or 2 or 4 or 8, but not like 3 or 5, whatever. So padding 4 here, you see, now it doesn't touch the borders anymore. And I would use a similar pattern for other elements. So in the nav bar, I would also have pattern 4. And now let's say we want to have, uh, for example, a logo here and the user email here. So I would add uh, another couple of divs uh, inside. Div1 and div2. Here I would have uh, something like a logo. Here I would have a email. This is just going to be separate divs. Okay, and I would also add a flex style to the whole div that is the navbar. And I would put them on different parts of the, uh, on different corners. So I would say justify between. Okay, now you see they are kind of between. Looks uh, a bit better. Now, what if we want to have, uh, well, the sidebar that is uh, full height? And what if we want to be able to scroll uh, the page with the fixed navbar and sidebar? Let's try making uh, our main content uh, array bigger and see how the scroll would work. I would uh, just add something like uh, uh, 1 to 100 each do uh, item and, and I would add some kind of p tag equals item and p just have some content on the page okay you see this kind of looks uh, fine but the navbar is not uh, fixed to the top so how can we do this i would uh, add the class sticky and just sticky is not enough so if we go to the tailwind docs that i highly recommend you see we need also to have top zero for stick to be to the top so i would say top zero now uh, I refresh and you see the navbar is sticked to the top. But we want to also stick the sidebar to, well, right under the navbar. And uh, also, what if we want to have like content on top of the sidebar and on the bottom of the sidebar? Let's first do this. So, again, in the sidebar, let's say I will have a couple of divs div uh, first and div second. So, sidebar top and sidebar bottom okay now i will uh, say that uh, this here the sidebar is going to be uh, flex flex column and uh, uh, justify between so this is uh, a column and uh, one part is on top one part is on the bottom okay but again we don't want to have like uh, the size of the sidebar as long as the size of the content of the page. We want it to be kind of fixed to our current uh, width. So uh, how can we do it? We would uh, have to add some kind of fixed width to our uh, sidebar. Uh, I would uh, also need to make it kind of sticky so that we always see the top of the sidebar. So let's start with the stickiness. I will also say sticky and the uh, top would be actually not zero because if we put zero you see uh, the sidebar is above the nav bar so top would be for example uh, 20 and uh, yeah this uh, doesn't help much in itself 
So I think, uh, what do I need to uh, stick it top 20? Maybe I need to set a fixed height to this element. So I would say height would be, and I would add a calculation, and I would say 100% uh, of our view height minus, uh, for example, 80 pixels. 80 pixels is uh, this uh, 20. How do I know this? If I add 20, here you see 80 pixels. Okay, I refresh, and now you see uh, the size of the sidebar is fixed. We always see the top, we always see the bottom, and uh, well, it is 20 pixels from the top. So let's also make the height of the navbar 20 pixels so that we don't have this blank space. So here I would say height 20. Okay, now you see our sidebar is fixed, our navbar is also fixed, but uh, the content is not on, uh, uh, well, in line in the navbar. So going to the navbar that we have here, I would uh, say we already have flex, justify between, I would say items center, and if I'm using flex and I add item center, then they're going to be centered between, uh, well, on the y axis. Okay, so uh, yeah, looks quite fine. And uh, what if we make our screen size, well, I mean, the content size smaller? How would it look? Uh, yeah, you see, it looks uh, fine. So it's kind of taking up all the space. What if we want to make it also kind of responsive? So you see, now I'm making the screen as small as well I can. I'm not sure if I can inspect uh, here and make it kind of mobile. I don't do that usually on Safari. Okay. Yeah, so basically let's say on a small screen we don't want to have the sidebar and we want to have a button to open a drop-down menu. Uh, let's see if we have something here in Tailwind Docs, for example, you see it's small and uh, I have uh, a button to open a drop-down menu. I make it bigger and uh, you see we have uh, different navigation. We have a sidebar, we have a navbar with more elements. So how can we do something like this? Uh, we're going to add some uh, breakpoints. So uh, going uh, back here to our nav, let's actually say that it is a nav element. And this is also a nav element. This is not going to change anything, but just it is more semantic HTML. Okay, so let's say that we don't want to have the sidebar visible uh, on a small screen. We are just going to add the class uh, hidden. And you see it gives us an error that hidden and flex are kind of uh, things that don't uh, stick together. So by default, when you design uh, responsive uh, CSS uh, with Tailwind, you would be thinking starting from the smallest uh, screen size. So on the smallest screen size, they say that this sidebar is hidden. And if uh, the breakpoint is of uh, medium size, then it is going to be flex. So hidden is going to be replaced with flex. Let's see if it works. I refresh and uh, you see we don't have that sidebar. I make the screen a bit bigger and now we have the sidebar. And you see we have this other extra space because uh, here we have width 5 out of 6 and uh, we just don't have anything uh, to display on this other thing. So we're going to add the flex grow to our main content and you see it's now going to definitely take up all the space when the sidebar is not visible on a small screen. So like this we have our sidebar that has a responsive but not fixed width. I really don't like fixed widths and uh, it disappears on a small screen. And also let's add some kind of uh, well uh, icon for a drop down that would appear on a small uh, screen instead of the sidebar. So I would go back here to our body. Let's add some kind of div that would have a drop down. And uh, you see now it is uh, visible and it is uh, moving the email to the center because we have this justify between. So if I put the email and the drop down into one div, then they will be still kept next to each other. Like this, you see that next to each other, but now one is under the other. So I will add again flex 
now they are sticked to each other so i will add the space x2 so the space between the elements within the div okay and now i want this drop down uh, icon to be visible uh, on all screen sizes except of the small screen so uh, i'm going to say uh, on the drop down element uh, uh, medium uh, hidden so all the screen sizes higher than medium this element is going to be hidden and now let's uh, check you see i'm increasing the size of the screen and uh, the drop down button disappears and the sidebar element appears so looks uh, quite good well i think this is more or less it let me just once again make the content uh, longer so uh, yeah here we have a basic layout that you can reuse in your ruby on rails applications but we have a navbar that is fixed to the top we have a sidebar that uh, has uh, top content bottom content let's just add some additional uh, nice style into the sidebar i will add the text center and padding four to it yeah so you see we have top part bottom part we have main content and then uh, we decrease the size of the screen the sidebar collapses and uh, we have a drop down button that appears and the main content takes up all the space on the page so yeah looks quite good and uh, in the next episode i would be uh, making this drop down button actually actionable so that when you click it a drop down down appears and you would see uh, content similar to the one you would have uh, in the sidebar like here for example you have this kind of drop down and it shows uh, different content so yes that's it thanks for being with me and see you in the next one